I'm trying something a little bit different today. I'm standing up. I was actually going to record this out on my balcony, but it's starting to rain and the landscapers for the property are very loud. I've never been off-roading before, and I don't think I've ever really had an interest to go off-roading. But speaking of off-roading, Rivian, a brand new electric car company, is releasing the R1T and the R1S later on. But this is a four-seater, all-electric pickup truck built for off-roading, like actually built for off-roading. I just read the article this morning. It got published on roadandtrack.com. So I was taking a look at this and it sparked a few pieces of interest for me because I'm so worried about the electric world. Now, let me explain a little bit why I'm worried about the electric world. I know it's trendy for the automotive journalistic world to be concerned about the advent of the electric vehicle. I'm not worried about it because of wanting to be on that bandwagon. I'm worried about it because I came late to the game when it comes to automotive interest. And I'm only now in my life realizing the beauty and passion behind an internal combustion engine. For me to completely miss out on enjoying that aspect, even though other people look at it like you just like noise, missing out on that would kind of suck. So in the interest of maintaining my passion, I'm forcing myself into reading the articles and learning about the cars that are all electric and that might actually be optimistic for the future, just to fuel that passion. Anyway, no pun intended on the fuel thing. So the Rivian R1T, this is meant to be a true all electric off-roader. And there's a couple of things about this that make it very interesting and very intriguing for the future. And then there's a couple of things that I find a little bit odd about it. And odd about the, the technological direction that we tend to be going in terms of aesthetics. Anyway, quick specs about the Rivian R1T. It's a four seater. There's also a three, there's also a third row coming with the, oh man, this could have all done, been done in one take. So quick run through on the specs of the Rivian R1T. I'm not gonna go into all the details because hopefully one day I'll get to drive it as an actual review, but it's basically a pickup truck, four seats, four doors. There's a third row coming with the R1S and it is an all electric, roughly 800 horsepower equivalent uh, electric car with four motors, one for each axle, and it's got 315 horsepower in the front, for, sorry, 415 in the front and about 420 in the back, but it's not simple addition. So you don't get a full 835, you get a little bit less. And there's a number of benefits that come with this setup and just the ability for it to be all electric with such a heavy car that lend to off-roading. Now, this is me speaking from listening to other people and reading what other people say. I've never been off-roading. I guess it would be interesting to go off-roading though. Here's some of the benefits of this kind of setup. Having a motor at each wheel obviously increases the amount of torque, but also the immediacy of that torque. And one of the things that I've been reading about with internal combustion off-roaders is all of the gadgetry and the sort of manipulation through different gears in the gearbox, a low range gear and all of this different stuff, locking differentials, is all meant to serve the gap that exists because of internal combustion. If that issue with internal combustion at the low range didn't exist and you were able to plant that torque to the road immediately, you wouldn't need all these gears. So this removes all of that. It makes off-roading completely immediate and it makes it extremely simple from the operator's standpoint. The other interesting thing about how this system works on the Rivian is their cross-link suspension. Now that term has been used with things like the McLaren 720S and McLaren has pretty much pioneered this idea or at least brought it to the relative automotive mainstream. And the way it basically works is from my understanding and correct me if I'm wrong, pretty much works like pushrod suspension, right? The idea that when one side compresses, the dampers on the opposite side will also compress to level the car out. Now this is happening intentionally and electrically with the cross-linked hydraulic suspension like it does in the McLaren or now in the Rivian. But one of the other things it also does is it makes all the suspension completely independent. So it makes it way more smooth to drive, but it also makes it way more level when it needs to be. It's actually, as I'm talking about it right now, this is the first time I actually looked into it and it's, it completely, anyway, I'm not gonna get into that. I'm late to the game on that one. But what this does for the off-roading is it increases the ability for the car to articulate, right? It allows each wheel to just independently react to what it needs to react to depending on the terrain that you're in, depending on the pitch of the car and the angle of the car and all that stuff. Yet another thing 
that is made easier by the technology that we have now. Not that that's related to the electric part, but still very, very cool. The other thing I actually like about this car is the fact that its design is actually not that funky. The front end looks really weird, right? It's missing, like, you look at a car like this and you expect it to have a big grill. Of all cars to not have a big grill nowadays, for this car not to have a big grill, not that it's necessary, but aesthetically for it to not have a big grill is, I think, a bit, it's like ironic. I think it would look really good with a big grill, even if it was completely non-functional. I mean, people, people are putting non-functional hood scoops on their car. You may as well put a non-functional grill. But aside from that, I think the styling of the car is very contemporary. It doesn't look funky. It's not trying to scream, look at me, I'm electric and I'm from 2055. It looks like a typical car that you would get today. And while some people really enjoy the funkiness that's coming and like it's shaking things up, there's also something to be said about things being a little bit more familiar. I think it brings more people in. The other thing that is very interesting about this car and some of the cars that have been coming out lately, like the Lucids, its range is like 320 miles. Sorry, just had to confirm that, 314 miles. Now. I don't know if I've said this in my previous videos, but one of the things that I've been kind of annoyed about to play devil's advocate against the internal combustion fanatics is everyone kept complaining like, oh, electric's never going to work because look at the range. And it's like every piece of technology starts out inadequate and then goes to a point where you can actually make it usable. Like anybody who thought that we weren't going to reach an acceptable range with electric vehicles is being a bit ridiculous and they're intentionally making that argument now we see we're hitting 314 miles on one charge but it's not just that you're moving a giant pickup truck 314 miles on one charge if you were to half the weight of that car that's a significant difference now how quickly it can charge is the next step. And all the people who say that, oh, it takes too long to charge, it'll never fit. We're gonna reach a point where it can quickly charge, I think, probably. And then the last really awesome thing about this is the fact that relatively, well, it's, it's less than six figures. Just leave it at that. Relatively much less expensive than the electric options that are out there right now that at least are worth buying. So I said that was the last interesting thing but I actually lied because there's two more very interesting things and I think very thoughtful things. Well, the second thing is more thoughtful. Anyway, we'll get to it. One thing I was really blown away by, which in general is a big deal, but for a pickup truck is even more of a big deal for me, is the interior. The shots of the interior, this thing is beautiful on the inside. It reminded me a little bit of Volvo um, or Polestar, I should say. But it's gorgeous. It's very well designed. It's somewhat Scandinavian and minimalistic, but it's also... I think it, it's well designed. The lines look really beautiful. The look of the seat surfaces look fantastic. I think it looks pretty nice. And one of the things I feel like exists in a lot of pickup trucks, maybe not like the newest ones that are out there, but sometimes it feels a little bit too utilitarian and rugged. Anyway, I think the interior is actually very, very appealing. So now the actual definite last really interesting thing about this whole thing is there's a gear tunnel, they call it a gear tunnel, behind the rear seats, between the rear seats and the rear axle. There's this little tunnel and it opens up and you have these panels that can be used as tailgating seats or as steps to get up into the, the, um, the cargo bed. Anyway, the point is that gear tunnel houses potentially a $5,000 option that you can choose called the camp kitchen which is literally a camping kitchen built into the car. It slides out and it's got a gas range and it's got utensils even. But here's the beautiful thing. The drawers are lined with cork. And you know why they're lined with cork? So that when you're driving along and the utensils are sitting in the drawers, they're not rattling around in the back of the car. Isn't that brilliant? Like, I love that. There's so many times I buy something, I'm like, this is such a low hanging fruit. Why didn't they just think of doing blank? And they did that. I think that's really cool. What they didn't do is use Apple CarPlay and uh, Google, whatever it's called. Going over to the things that I think are a little bit, maybe gripes, I wouldn't call them gripes, but maybe questions. One is, why is it that every electric car goes towards the touchscreen thing? Now, I think touchscreens in a car are a terrible idea. When you're standing still, fine, they're useful. But when you're maneuvering things 
on the road when you're driving, it becomes very difficult. Number one, it makes you take your eyes off the road. One of the things I always talked about when touchscreen phones came, when smartphones came, the one thing that makes it difficult is you can't text without looking at the phone. Because when you had the little numbers, you can you knew how many times you needed to press each to get a letter. Not while driving, you shouldn't text while driving. So for example, in my car now, the user interface is, is controlled by a dial and by buttons. So I don't have to look at anything in order to do what I need to do. I can glance over at the screen and make sure I'm going in the right direction. And it's why I don't use the touchscreen in my car, even though it has a touchscreen, I just use the dial and the buttons because it's easier to use. I, why, like, what do you think? I think that having an electric car doesn't mean you need to have a touch screen. You can have all the normal buttons and make it feel like a normal car. Not everything has to go in this direction where everything is completely new and, and futuristic. And I don't know, I just think that you don't really need that. But the other thing I wonder, and this is for all the off-roaders and experienced off-roaders out there. I, the first feeling I got was that removing the need to balance the gearbox and you know, sort of handle the internal combustion engine in the process of off-roading, I kind of feel like that's half of the fun of it, wouldn't it be? Because it's described as just those are all there to make up for the inadequacies of internal combustion. And when you don't have that anymore, you don't need that. I kind of feel like that's the appeal. No? I'm sure, I'm, yeah, I'm sure it's fun going off-roading and like navigating the difficulties of the different terrains. But isn't part of the difficulty of navigating the terrains having to maneuver the car and do it well and efficiently and smoothly? And I don't know. What do you think? Does that potentially ruin the appeal of off-roading? And then the third question is, how do you feel about me constantly switching up topics on this channel? I've realized, well, throughout the whole thing, but I'm very haphazard when it comes to what's on this channel. And to be honest, this whole thing is an exercise in experience for me. Uh, and I know that I make a lot of random videos and things go in different directions. How do you feel about it? You guys are the subscribers. You guys are the ones who stuck around to deal with my nonsense all this time. What do you think? Tell me what you feel. So is the Rivian R1T going to change the way we look at off-roading vehicles? Is electric now going to be the way to go? Or does it ruin the appeal by removing all of the skill involved in maneuvering a gearbox? Do I need more funky colored t-shirts for my videos? You let me know in the comments below. Hit the like button hit the subscribe button. Oh, here's an interesting way to let me know. Hit the like button if you think I should start separating my content or stick to one particular thing and let me know in the comment what particular thing you think I should stick with. And if you think I should keep going on the same path and just do whatever topic comes to me, hit the subscribe button. Just to let me know what you think, not for any other reasons. But anyway, those are my thoughts. You let me know what you think and I will see you in the next video.